Today, I've got a really cool video for all of those of you who are looking to break 90 for the first time. I'm going to give you two very pragmatic things that you can do today to help you get to your goals. Let's get started. As part of that, I'm going to play two sample holes at the Georgia Golf Club in Augusta, Georgia. This is uh, GS Pro's artistic impression of the Augusta course. And I think that it's absolutely lovely. If you have GS Pro, make sure to download it. Chances are, if you're struggling to break 90 for the first time, you'll see this driver in my hand. It's a scary weapon. Sometimes you don't know if it's going to go left or right or get off the ground. This driver plays an integral part in what I'm going to call rule number one. And that is, we have to check our ego at the door. In order to break 90, if you can't hit your driver a long way without it leaking off the fairway or maybe going out of bounds, we just need to temper our expectations and either keep it in the bag or learn to swing with an abbreviated swing, just working on your form. To start with, let's look at hole one at Georgia Golf Club. As part of checking our ego at the door, we have two things that we're going to do. The first is, we're not going to take huge swings. And the second is, part of checking our ego at the door, we're going to actually tee off from the red tees. We don't need to play the blacks, don't need to play the blues. If we're specifically working on improving our course management, we need to get closer to the hole. So let's just do the reds today. That'll make it a lot easier on us in the long run as we're learning this beautiful game of golf. If we look ahead, about 120 to 160 yards, there's trouble. We got some sand traps on the right. It's a little bit narrow. I'm going to try to aim between the trees and that fairway bunker on the right, and let's see if I can just put one out there. Stay. All right, we're gonna be on the fairway. We're good. So we had a pretty good drive off the tee. I was able to maintain the left side of the fairway, and we got 95 yards in. Right now, there's a scary bunker between us and that pin. I don't want to get anywhere near that bunker. I'm looking to break 90 here. So what I want to do is, first off, understand in your head that we are trying to play one over golf for every single hole. So we're looking to play bogey golf. And right now, this is a par four. We have five shots to get that in the hole to be what we're going to call par. That's what we need to feel good about is getting a par score. We're already only 95 out. We got four shots left. So I'm not going to do anything stupid here. All I'm going to do is try and put something up to the front edge of that green so that we can get it on. And then we can just get up and down in four or five. You can either use a pitching wedge or a 56 degree. Uh, I've actually got a 56 degree right here in my hands that I'm going to do it with. And remember, the goal is, let's keep it out of that bunker. Let's not try and be a hero here. Let's play within ourselves. Let's just get it to the front edge of that green to the right side of that bunker. Okay, so we're lying too. Looks like we got 31 yards, four feet uphill. This is a par four. This is our third shot. So we have two to get up and down to make birdie because this is a par five if we're looking to break 90. We're playing bogey golf. So we just have to get that in the hole in three tries. Looks like we got our first birdie. All right, so right now we're actually playing true par golf. So right now we're one under. On hole number two, this is a par five at Georgia Golf Club. So our goal is going to be to get this ball down in six. 
from the red tees were 394 yards out. So this time I'm going to demonstrate a different way that we can get up and down within five or six. And that is we're not going to hit the driver. We're 394 yards out here on the second hole at Georgia Golf Club which is a par five. We got some trouble again on the right side of the fairway. I got out my trusty seven iron. All that we're looking to do is take a nice controlled swing and get it out there to the left side of those bunkers so that they're not in our way. She'll only take us a couple of these and we should be on the green. So let's give it a shot. Get us a good run. Come on, go! Looks like we've got about 193 yards left into the hole. There looks to be trouble about 180 yards ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the same 7 iron just right off the fairway. Let's give it a shot. Let's see how close we can get to between those bunkers. Go, 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 go! Looks like we left us in pretty good shape here. We got 34 yards into the pin. This is our third shot on a par 5. So I want you to take out what hopefully as a person that's looking to break 90 that you're somewhat familiar with and that is your 56 degree wedge. Nothing around the green is going to help you more than this little guy. And what we're going to do is we're just going to try and chip it up there to the center-ish of the Green, uh, maybe a little bit more towards the flag, but we really need to take those two bunkers out of play. So let's go ahead and do that. Now make sure when you're setting up to the ball that you got a lot of that weight on your leading leg when you're chipping. Keep your legs nice and close together. Maybe open your stance a little bit. That'll help promote a little extra height on your ball. Go! Oh, so close. All right, so on hole two, we managed to get ourselves a five, which means that we birdied it as well if we're looking to play bogey golf. We didn't even use our driver. We went, what was it, 400 yards with just a seven iron. Just two shots to get it up near the front edge of that green and then a chip. You don't need your driver in every hole. You don't need to be a hero on every hole. If it keeps you on the fairway to use an iron, choose an iron. If you need a little help around the greens, take extra time to make sure that you're practicing with either a pitching wedge or with your sand wedge. Those are the two clubs that are going to help shave off the most strokes off your game that isn't related to putting. To recap, today we learned two things. One, you have to make sure that you can check your pride at the door and you can just show up on a hole and say, you know what, my goal here is to not do something stupid. If you're looking to play bogey golf, which is really the gateway to good golf, you need to minimize the mistakes at first, and you wait until you get better later to be able to take more risky or challenging shots. The other thing that we learned is you don't need to use a driver on every hole where you think you should. If that driver is going to put you in trouble, you just need to put it in the bag. We're not looking for style points here. We're actually just looking to lower our score and feel good about what we're doing on the golf course. So we don't need a driver in every hole. Make sure we stay out of trouble. And finally, as we learned, we need to work on the short game. Your pitching wedge and your sand wedge, your 56 degree, are going to be your best friends. If you're going to the range to practice, Instead of hacking like four irons, which are going 50 yards and more, or the dirt's going farther than the ball, just put them in the bag. Work on your pitching wedge and your sand wedge exclusively. And if you couple that with improving your putting stroke, you're going to be golden. In no time, you're going to be knocking on the door of 85. Please like, subscribe, and share to my YouTube channel, Southpaw Links Golf. Until next time.